We've all experienced going into our car in the morning, starting the engine, turning on the heat, only to find out that it takes 5 to 10 minutes for it to actually start heating the car. Sure, you can leave the car running for 10 minutes before entering, but the few times you forget to do that, it can be quite uncomfortable sitting in a 40 degree enclosure. So today, we're gonna find out if using some cheap electric window defrosters is a good alternative until the car's heat kicks in. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will leave a link for all the parts in the description, and let's get started. Now I got this defroster for about $8 from Amazon. It looked quite promising, claiming to be a 12 volt, 150 watt heater and defroster. If we hook it up to my power supply, we should hear it start blowing warm air. After raising the current, of course. It seems to have a fan mode besides its heating mode. Which you can tell right away because of the heavy current draw maxing out my power supply. And when measuring its output temperature, we can watch it slowly heat up. If you were wondering why this heater was so cheap, then let me tell you that the wires powering this heater were so thin that it became nearly as hot as the actual hot air coming from the heater. Insane, right? And I'm not alone, just look at the reviews from Amazon. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to upgrade those wires. But for now, let's just see if one of these heaters are capable of affecting the temperature from my car. And just because I'm curious, I'll leave it with its original wires. Just joking, but seriously, I'm prepared for the worst. As soon as I plug it into the 12 volt outlet from the car, the temperature starts rising as expected, settling at 160 degrees Fahrenheit after running for a minute. Not bad. But what about the car? Was the defroster able to change the inside temperature? I'm not sure why, but the temperature from inside the car actually went down instead of going up. This might be because it became cloudy outside or the multimeter is just not working properly. But since this is an experiment and these heaters were quite cheap, I bought another 3 defrosters which will give us a total of 600 watts of heating power. Having this many heaters will hopefully get it to heat up my car. If I hook them up all together to my power supply, we can see that the voltage drops to 5 volts since each one of these heaters pull around 10 amps which means we need a total of 40 amps. I just happen to have a motorcycle battery which can handle hundreds of amps. I'll install some copper lugs so we should get a solid connection between the battery and the frosters. A little solder can't hurt. Now we can hook it up to the battery. After powering up the heaters, we can see a current draw of about 50 amps. I gotta say, it kind of feels like a hair dryer. I think it's gonna work. As I mentioned earlier, I'll replace these unlabeled wires, which I think are about 20 gauge, which can only handle a maximum of 3.5 amps. 16 gauge wire on the other hand can handle a maximum of 13 amps which should be perfect. I'll go ahead and place the defrosters on the dash so I can measure how much wire I need. Knowing this I can now cut it down to the perfect length. I'll unscrew the heater. Unsolder the thin wires and then install the new ones. Well, time to repeat the process another three times. I'll install some cable logs once again since it's easier to work with when it comes to high current applications. 
Now I originally thought of hooking up the heaters straight to the car battery using a 6 gauge jumper cable. This is because it can handle hundreds of amps while the alternator will keep it fully charged. But after preparing the cable and looking for the best spot to feed the power through, I realized that it'll be way too risky to drill through the car's metal frame because there are too many wires and pipes in the way. So as a backup plan, I thought about just using the motorcycle battery from before since it has a capacity of 20 amp hour, which means it can run 50 amps for about 20 minutes or for 30 minutes if it's plugged into the 12 volt outlet from the car. Now just because I don't want to run the heaters continuously, I'm going to use a 12 volt thermostat. These things are quite easy to set up and can be used for both heating and cooling. I mistakenly got the Celsius version, but it's okay since we only have to set this up once and then forget about it. It already comes with a 10 amp relay, but since we're going to be switching 50 amps, I'm going to be adding a 500 amp relay. After hooking up the relay, we can see when the temperature goes below 23 degrees Celsius, the relay turns off. Now before installing all this in my car, I'll put everything together for a quick test. I also added a 50 amp resettable fuse for safety. And here we go. It kicks on immediately since it's way colder than the set temperature. I warm up the sensor with my hand to trick the thermostat to turn off. As soon as I let go of the sensor, it cools down quickly, causing the system to turn back on. And now that we see that it works, let's install it in my car. I'll start by placing the heaters on the dash and I gotta say it was worth it to take measurements because now the wires are neither too long or too short. I only hand tightened the bolts for testing so now I'll finish it off with my socket wrench. And oh yeah, I almost broke my windshield. I'm also going to install an 18 gauge wire to charge up the battery while the heater is not in use and to take off some load from the battery while heating up the car. This wire is thin and long on purpose to minimize the current going through it since these ports are not designed for high current and I don't want to blow the 15 amp fuse. These things come with fuses. And now that everything is ready I'll leave the car to cool down for a while and then test it out. It's been a few hours now, outside is around 44 degrees, while inside is 50, since my car is black and absorbs a lot of heat. As soon as I power up the thermostat, we can hear all the defrosters kicking on and see that the temperature is starting at around 49.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can now start the timer and let it run for 50 minutes and see how long it takes to heat up my car. I'll keep an eye on the battery's charging current to make sure we don't go too high. After 8 minutes, the temperature is at a more acceptable 61.8 degrees, so a raise of about 12 degrees so far. This equals to 1.5 degrees per minute. At this point, the engine temperature is already hot enough to start heating the car. But I'll leave it all for this test since we only want to focus on the defroster's performance. The charging current is almost 10 amps, but let's keep going. After reaching 50 minutes, we're standing at a comfortable 67.1 degrees, which for some people is already considered room temperature. We're now measuring 15 amps of charging current, which is way higher than I wanted. But since the engine has long been hot, the thermostat would already have turned off the heating, preventing from busting a fuse. And after this test, we ended up heating the car from 49.6 to 67.1 degrees, which equates to a total raise of 17.5 degrees Fahrenheit and an average temperature increase of 1.16 degrees per minute. Since we got 1.5 degrees per minute after 8 minutes, it seems to be that the colder it is, the faster the system will heat up my car. But what do you think? Was this a success? Was it a waste of time? Or is there something you would do differently? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of them. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting me through Patreon, where you can have early access to my new videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Yep, there's definitely power.